Oh, you right, guys? It's Dan Var. Welcome back to the DMB Archive. Uh, I've got a nice video for you today. I've switched up a bit. Uh, we're doing dance floor, drum and bass, and I've uh, just made this track, which I'm about to break down. Because um, it's the more complicated side of drum and bass, this project looks very complicated. And don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna like chat about it. I think it. I mean, it kind of goes into depth, but that's cool. We'll like show you how I've done everything. Um, sorry I've been slacking on the videos recently. Uh, next video is going to be very good for starters, so watch out for that. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. Right, I'll play this track out for you first. I'll play the intro and the drop. Um, and yeah, let me just, I'll stop shine and then I'll start. <laughs> Let me relocate, let me relocate Let me see the sun, see what I've become Let me That's enough. So, I'm gonna start at the beginning and work my way through, um, because that always seems to be the easiest route of things. So I have this vocal here from the amazing Lily Clark. Uh, go follow her on Instagram. Um, so I have this vocal here, which I've rooted to a different channel. All of this is completely organised here, but I just sent it over here. <coughs> On it, I've got a um, a low cut and high cut, a load of reverb. Like I've turned the dry down, the wet completely up. I'm basically turning this into a pad. Uh, another EQ, another reverb. So I've turned this little vocal here, which sounds like this. Oh yeah, I've also reversed it. It's a little pad in the background, if you can hear that. Cool. I also have two ambiences, which I'm pretty sure are just from Splice, um, but don't tell anyone that. This is what they sound like. Uh, an intro there, just I've used this new FL21 update trick just to fade it in. And I've got this thing here, and this little reverse. Which I'm also going to add down here. So I have also these hats that are starting to be brought in. That I've uh, automated the volume on. Just so it doesn't sound really harsh. This is just a normal hat. I also have here uh, a pad from Organic Pads. Um, it's from Spitify Audio. They sound amazing. This is what they sound on their own. That's just the preset I've chosen. Maybe there's another better one, but there's so many good presets. And it's cheap. It's very cheap. This is like £30. So 
So I definitely recommend checking it out for stuff like this. It's really good. So I also have this uh, forest and bird thing sound in the back, which I think sounds really cool. I'm actually going to add it here. Sorry, I'm kind of mixed, changing things as I'm going along. Uh, and then I have this city ambience as well, which is literally just a city. Um, these kind of things just add a lot of texture to the song uh, and make it sound more professional because making a song sound more professional is kind of having your own like saturated kind of analog like serum kind of sound things uh, with drums and adding a lot of like almost like nature n nature sounds I know it sounds ridiculous and I've explained that so badly but it's having organic stuff that sounds clean and professional mixed in with all the electronic stuff that is what makes a song sound really professional obviously there's other things as well but that is a big part of it so having all this stuff just really adds a lot of stuff together have this ambience here again it's probably just from splice some simple processing honestly just a low cut and reverb just been lazy with that proper lazy i'm gonna take that a bit more actually what i've been doing is basically cutting the fundamental out of all these ambient things because some would perhaps clash even if they're in the same key um and it just makes it sound more ambient and pad like i then bring in this piano here um which is this free one from labs actually the autograph grand I would definitely recommend uh, getting this. I use it for pretty much every track I make. Um, I have one other contact one that I use um, every so often, but honestly, this one sounds just as nice. Play it on its own. Turn this automation on. sounds perfect you can uh, do a lot with the velocity as well sounds nice down here a bit more soft and ambient kind of stuff that is for liquid Let me I'm going to actually put a low cut on this piano as well. I am definitely changing things as I go along. That I do just because I also have brought in a respace. This one, yeah. Just sounds like this. Nothing special. It's the respace I always use. I've just turned down the distortion a ton and uh, pulled the cutoff back. And that just adds a lot of depth. Let me relocate. Let me relocate. I also have this little like siren noise that I made in Serum, which is really simple. <clears throat> this is one to keep in mind because it's always something you can do in a track like this. So what it sounds like. Basically just a saw wave. No detuning or anything. I've just put the slide all the way up. Um, then when we come to mix, I've got this EQ. Yeah, I know. It's quite harsh. Uh, a lot of reverb and another Pro R reverb, which does a really good job. That slide effect all comes from making sure this port is a little bit quite high up and that just sits in the background and sounds really cool let me see the sun see what i've become let me relocate let me relocate i also show you what processing i have on the vocals uh let me relocate let me put turn this automation back on let me relocate 
I have this low cut here. Let me relocate. Just quite loose because I want to kind of just tame the sound instead of just like ridiculously cut out and make it sound really thin. Have this another EQ here to boost some of let the me, frequencies we want in the F section to really bring out the vocal in this loud, annoying mix. I have some uh, auto tune that we don't really need to be honest, but just put it there just in case. I have this Arvox here, which is a compressor. It does a really good job it's very simple so if you don't really know your compression i would definitely recommend using this um this basically just monitors the compression amount Let me relocate. this is the makeup gain so you can turn this down after it kind of boosts the gain from here and you can make a gate as well which i don't really use um especially with vocals like this because it doesn't really need it this cuts out any noise you don't want Let me relocate. which is just below this point i may as well put one on let me relocate. Any noise below this will be completely cut out. Um, I have just a simple reverb, which is again quite a lot of the stereo separation up quite a bit. And this um, delay, which is my favourite delay I think I ever have, which is uh, from Fab Filter. Let me relocate. Let me relocate. That sounds really cool. I love the sound of that delay. Um, but yeah, we're getting close to the drop. Let me see the sun, see what I've become. Let me so I have, I'll get into the sound design for the bass in a second. I have a few rises here. Let me have this tonal riser which just brings us into this drop part and I have the kick and the kick sounds weird almost because I have put two of these things as separate kicks so they're on different channels are they on different channels yeah so this one isn't even in a channel so that's the normal kick then this this kick which is being brought down so i'll show you what it, uh there's this eq here that's been automated to do this just bringing out the low cut and this is with these frequencies here um i only recently learned this trick actually um instead of just creating an automation clip for the whole eq if you move this knob here and then right click this up here and click create automation clip um this can move and I did not know this from the parametric EQ, and I'm so glad I figured this out. Um, but yeah, it makes it so much cleaner. So we have this with the kick. Then we have this filter, which just moves the high end up now. It's pretty simple. Uh, a few more rises. Rises are so good. I just love rises. That's a the track. And endless smile here, which I have. Which adds, like adds reverb. I've been over this plugin a few times. Uh, adds reverb and a fat low cut on everything. Just automated that to go up, and this happens at multiple points in the track. Um, yeah. So I pop my Yeah, let me um get into the bass. So now we've got the drop, which I'll play you again quickly. Let me relocate. It's anything that's simple of this track. It's pretty much the drop. Um, I have this chop here from one of the ambience pads. This chop here from a vocal, which has just been pitched the whole way up. This another chop from a vocal. Sounds horrible together uh, and without the drums, but oh, let me turn these automations back on quickly. I've loved these rides in this kick and snare.
show you what processing goes through the kick. Kick, I'm just got a high cut on it. You can also do this and take the sub out of your kick. Um, I haven't in this track just because the kick's not too subby. I've removed uh, just about a hundred on the snare. Try not to remove this fundamental here, as you can see. That will make the sound so very weak. Just everything you don't need from that. Loosen some of the air of the kick, and then no, the snare. Sorry. Then I'm saturating the hell out of it without saturation. Saturation. Adds some more harmonics to it. Uh, on these ri uh, rides, I have a S1 stereo shaper, which is just stereo shaping it a bit. I also have um, this low cut. It's also important to add, re uh, not add reverb to things that don't need reverb. Um, I know usually you can to your drums if you want, but if you have a lot of reverb, it can make the mix very muddy and hard to actually get a good final clean mix for. So bear that in mind. Um, I will now break down the um, bass sound itself. So. I have this pattern first of all, which isn't that complicated. I've got them in like, I think it's in triplets. What's it in? Well, I've got it on one fourth beat, and I'm kind of doing it like this. It's important to play around with these parts as well, like half time and or whatever, to make it kind of more bouncy. What you also have to bear in mind is you have to make it memorable because if it's not, it's just going to sound like a mess. So in this, I've got this kind of same pattern, which is just this been brought down an octave to vary it a bit. This is the first variation. So I'll show you how I've made this sound. This is what the sound like sounds like without the bass sub in it. Um, I have two sine waves here. One is with the sync up and sync's just here, the no window one. I've brought this up to create a good FM, if you know what that means. So, uh, it, I don't know how to explain FM, I really don't know. It's so, I can't, someone would do a better one on YouTube, I'm sure. I've just selected FM from B here and brought this up. Um, this is irrelevant, I don't know why that's at minus one. Um, so this FM's to this, without this oscillator, <laughs> hear that it's just some distorted mess with it and this is just fm from being from this and the sync is up if the sync wasn't up it's 2.47 if the sync wasn't up it's like this so that's why it sounds a lot better up and gives a lot of more like tonality to it I've also put this up two octaves and got seven semitones. Um, got this filter, which is automated from this LFO, which also automates the volume of both the oscillators and the sub and the noise. Sub is kind of irrelevant in this situation because I've whacked a fat low cut on there. I'll show you later, but don't really need the sub in it. It just adds some fatness. Um, this LFO here on this car. <laughs> adjust this to however you want also goes to the drive I'll show you what I have on effects uh, some delay that I don't actually use an EQ just whammed like a fat high boost in there some distortion some dimension that I've added to kind of give it a bit more width uh, also I haven't talked about the detuning I've detuned this uh, to unison 3 so it sounds slightly wider uh, and add some noises to it. I've got some light reverb here as well. Um, sort of sound sounds like all together. I have quite a few effects on the master as well. So I we have this low cut on the master on the mixer, sorry, uh, and this high boost again because the sound itself is quite dirty. The saturation knob. <laughs> difference 
the saturation knob makes. I love using it. Uh, have this distortion here. <laughs> Ambience reverb, which sounds really cool. And as you can tell, I automate this at certain points to make it go up. I have this uh, free reverb too, which is brought down on the mix quite a lot. This limiter, which is the side chain uh, from this kick here. So the kick is side chained to, if you just right click on it, and just side chain to this track, it just side chains to this. Uh, we'll have to redo this again, that's no, fine. And I've brought down the threshold and the knee. Every time the kick plays, this will go down. Uh, then I have a simple sub bass here, which follows it. Just the same thing. On the sub bass, I have distortion, uh, low cut, and the same side chain thing. Because of the effects on the um, mid bass, I use a separate sub just so it's complete the sub's completely unaffected and has its own clean fat sound which is key um, I have this downlifter this another downlifter here apart from that uh, that is pretty much it uh, I'll show you some more variations I have I have this endless smile here same one I use for here. Have this part here where it goes. This again is which one's been automated. Oh, one. So like this trick I used earlier with the EQ, I'm using it for the the basis as well. I have this part now in this bit. Once you have your basic shape, you can create as much variation as you'd want, um, within reason obviously. Uh, that's pretty much it for the drop. Uh, I have this ambience still in um, the background. Um, that's probably not actually a good thing <laughs> because this one has quite a lot of uh, low frequencies to it so I'm actually going to take this city one out quickly This bridge section. Let me see the sun. So I have not yet created any variation apart from this drone here, which sounds like this. See the sun. This filter cough off cuffs are relevant. That was just something I added earlier and got rid of. Uh, I have this Pro R here, which is the one on the, the automation for the bass, so it starts like this. little vocal bit but yeah that's pretty much all of it I'll show you my master channel quickly <clears throat> which has changed slightly from last time I have an OTT times 100% uh, depth at 16 because I'm not actually compressing this very much because um, I've had this OTT on from the start and I've kind of just crafted it through it have this uh, preset from Proce uh, mega mid control which is really good. That's just on the master section here. I shove this on pretty much everything. Pro R, which is just useful automation, so it's not on the whole thing. The endless smile thing I showed you already. Soothe 2, which if you can get your hands on, definitely do it. I've just whacked this on here, no presets whatsoever. This just controls the um the peaks that need to be controlled. I'll show you what it does. Okay. <laughs> Such a good 
good job of taming all those frequencies. Um, like this, I have this, I've showed you in every video. I have this side EQ, which is just a low, fat low cut on the whole master, which removes any low frequencies from the stereo and just leaves a mono, which you could do in this scenario here. Uh, if you just went to the bass and like wham, like shove a mono on it. But I would not do that because it can make the sound like, oh, I don't know, it sounds disgusting sometimes. And if you want the kind of high frequencies of the bass, even if there's not tons to be stereo, then definitely just do this. Um, I have a limiter on it here as well, which I haven't actually done anything on. As you can see, um, <laughs> it has quite a high one. This is like minus 12, which doesn't, I would say, obviously keep an eye on the lofts, but if you're happy with a mix, don't rely on it too much, because obviously people try to get it to minus 14 all the time. It's not too bad if it's loud, too loud. Um, maybe it's a problem if it's too quiet, if you're like going about minus 18, maybe minus 20, that's quite quiet for the track. Um, you're going to probably want to bring everything up just using this limiter here which you can just shove on um, where's aggressive you can use this aggressive preset here this one here I bring this up I'm not gonna do this in this case because I really don't need to making sure you have no peaks like this I've been brought down very slightly just because the limiters limiting everything um, but yeah that's pretty much the whole track um, thanks for watching uh, next video for the starter one I'm gonna drop be dropping a free FLP as well um, for the next video and it'll be a scratch from scratch so watch out for that if you're trying to learn uh, liquid drum and bass um, or any type of drum and bass it's a good place to start I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and learnt something. Um, still dropping the sample pack soon. We're having some uh, collaborations chuck over some samples that they just made. So it's going to be a class drum pack for everything. Jump up drum and bass, liquid drum and bass, dance floor drum and bass like this. Um, but yeah, so stay involved. Um, keep watching the videos because you will learn something, I promise you. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I'll play it out for you. Enjoy. Have a nice day. Let me relocate. Let me relocate. So I just want to say for in the video, thanks for all the support. 
um, and to this comment, I'll be now be changing it to the Ash skin from the default. We have officially moved. Um, yeah, hope you've enjoyed. Goodbye.